Welcome to the first part of our administration certification exam preparation. This piece, I'll be talking specifically about the organization setup. The organization setup will comprise 1% of your Salesforce exam. And so this specific lecture will be very, very brief, but it will give you the most important pieces of information that you're going to need to get through that part of the test. So, I want you to imagine that you have logged into Salesforce for the first time and you have to begin to set up the organization that you work for. Let's call it Organization X. And you have to now begin to set up all the settings related to that organization. And this is what organization setup is all about. So you have to fill in the company profile into Salesforce. You have to fill in the details. You have to map out the licenses, the user licenses. We'll talk a little bit more about this in later lectures, the featured licenses. And then you need to do things like list the currency. So if you are a company with multiple currencies, you have to select the default currency for the head office, which is what we're dealing with right now. We're setting up the headquarters of this organization. So this is where you would set the currency. And remember, Salesforce can use multiple currencies, and that's, that is an option, all right? And this serves as the basis for all currency conversion rates. So if you set the headquarters currency as, for example, the South African Rand, any sub organization that's linked to the headquarters that may be in a different country those uh, exchange rates will be converted to rands okay so the personal locale overrides the organization setting so someone in china will see their currency in uh, the chinese currency right however when the head office looks at their currency they will see it in for example in this case south african rand okay and so Often companies will choose the US dollar as their primary currency, but obviously it's not easy for a, a sub company in Singapore or in South Africa or elsewhere to see their current their country's currency uh, reflected in someone else's currency, right? So this is where you really put in those parameters. Who's going to see what and who's going to be working in what denomination? Thirdly, you're going to describe the effect of changing the company's default time zone, currency, locale, and language. So a user's time zone really matters in Salesforce because it links to when people have done certain things. And so in this case, you will go into Salesforce and set the default time zone. In other words, when is the end of the business day and when does the business day begin? All right. We also have not only changing currencies and changing time zones, we can also put in the fiscal year setting. So the default is the standard uh, fiscal year setting, which follows the Gregorian calendar, which starts the first day of any month. You then have the custom fiscal year setting. The custom fiscal year setting uh, can start at any time in the year on any date. In the month all right so if Salesforce uh, says to you if the question on your exam says um, this is a which one of these is not a custom fiscal year and you can see that the one of the dates that's mentioned does not begin uh, on the first of the month uh, it's likely to be a custom fiscal year right um, I know that in some organizations their fiscal year actually starts in July and so this is an example of a custom fiscal year. The key thing to note though is that once you change your fiscal year to custom you won't be able to disable it right so that's something that you really need to discuss with your organization before setting that up. Okay so once you change your fiscal year it may delete existing forecasts, forecast history, forecast overrides, reports and all quotas. Okay, so if you are using the standard setting at this moment and you change it to the custom setting, know that you will lose some data. However, to preserve this, uh, you, you should use a month that starts a fiscal year and not a random month. 
So Salesforce gives you some of those options, uh, and so you'll need to, to do that. This is the most important information to know in relation to organization setup. It's very, very simple. Uh, when you look at some of the notes, there's a lot of information, but in the exam, these are some of the critical things to take away. One is to know what you need to put into Salesforce, which is the organization details. Secondly, the currency, uh, the currency of the head office or headquarters and the currency of the sub offices. And thirdly, the time zone, uh, which time zone is the default time zone. And finally, the fiscal year, whether that will be a standard or custom fiscal year. And remember, once you change something to custom, you're unable to go back. And finally, when you change it to a custom fiscal year, you not only will you lose a lot of your data, um, you will need to, in order to mitigate that, you should use a month that starts a fiscal year and not a random month. So those are some of the key things that you need to take away as you go through this part of the exam.